Episode 2 Trying Everything to Save Alex At this point, it had been few weeks, but no sign of Alex's brain activity. He was still unconscious but, his body had been healing itself internally. More and more people came to visit Alex, and put a get well soon card with flowers. Even the Sultan of Brunei had, sent him some flowers and some traditional sweet dish, called Penurem specially made for Alex and his well-wishers, who were present at the Woodside Clinic. Debbie, on the other hand, have totally left her work at the Virtuad Real Estate, and let it handle to her uncle Rufus, while she has been busy in the clinic, waiting for Alex to wake up, and at the same time reading materials, and cases regarding coma patients. She was willing to help him by any means she could. Earlier, she even asked help from, the Black Orchid Cult, but they had no solution to this problem. This is totally a different situation. The Chosen One, said Cassius. Normally if people go to coma it happens due to, some injuries to the head, or increased pressure, bleeding, loss of oxygen, or buildup of toxins. But Alex have neither of them and his brain have no injury. Yet he was in a deep sleep. We are still looking for answers. And have contacted doctors from Toronto General Hospital. They are in contact with some of the world's best neurosurgeon from Spain. They are working on them to get here soon, replied Cassius, the now leader in charge of the Black Orchid cult. My queen, do not worry. Something will definitely come up. And as long as Alex is breathing, we have time to find the answers. Saying this Cassius went back to Canada to Black Orchid Cult Mansion. Debbie was heartbroken as she couldn't find anything to help. To wake Alex up, she has already sent Callisto and Luna back to the Moon Palace to find out anything and everything regarding ancient scripts on the Moon Palace of healing medicines, especially those dealing with the brain or coma patients. If only I had any knowledge about medicine like Alex did. She thought to herself in regrets. I would be of some help to him. All these times, when I was far from him, I wasn't helpless. But now even after being near to him, I'm just helpless and have been so desperate, yet I'm unable to do anything to help him. By this point Sophie, Mary Ann, Kendall, Celeste and Celine all were worried about Debbie. She's going to hurt herself by not taking proper rest and reading books day and night without proper health care, said Sophie. I know that pain and hunger to find answers, Kendall said to the others. I've seen it myself during my younger times, when an old friend of mine was sick. The doctors told she had only five or six months to live. Her brother, who was also a friend of mine, went far and wide to find a cure for his sister. He didn't sleep till days and went on to different places to find a cure. He finally rested when he found a cure in an ancient place near the mountains of Tibet. He traveled to Africa, Russia, Japan, China, India, and finally found a cure in the mountains of Tibet. By the time he came back with the cure, she had very less time to live. The cure was provided at the right time, and for that reason, she lived. But her brother now felt sick, and had very poor health, due to constantly pushing one's body limit, said Kendall to the rest of the group. He survived but could never ever walk after that incident. My friend survived but at the cost of her brother's health. I can see the same fire in Debbie, said Kendall. We need to do something, said Sophie. But she does not listen to us, mentioned Celine. Me and Celeste have already tried to talk to her, and we also informed her about her health, but she doesn't listen, said Celine. It's like she's too stubborn to listen to anything we say. Wait, I have an idea, exclaimed Mary Ann. What if we tell some of the others who visited here earlier to visit here tomorrow and share our stories about Alex and how we met him and what it meant to us to meet Alex. This will surely make her happy and she will also have a break from this situation and these stories will give her some time to think that she is not alone in this journey, said Mary Ann. We are all in this together. Also, this will be a great bonding time with her and she will be comfortable with us and she will know that we all are here for Alex. Then she can let go some pressure from her and take some rest. Well, Oh, this is an excellent plan, shouted Celeste with excitement. We are ready for it, added Selen. So, the group invited Kelly, Nellie and Rose. On the next day, Kelly and Nellie arrived. Rose was hesitant at first but, she knew what Debbie meant to Alex and she, wanted to the right thing. She knew Alex will not love her but, she also knew that Alex will not hate her, or what she was going to do. So, all three of them arrived, and entered the Woodside Clinic. As soon as they arrived, Mary Ann greeted them. Thank you for coming at such short notice. I wanted you all to know that this means a lot to all of us who are waiting impatiently for Alex to wake up. But more than us, Debbie have been at worst. She has not stepped out of the clinic for days now and have been reading to articles and finding cure online. She has even lessened her eating to just one meal a day. At this rate, she's bound to get sick sooner or later. Mary Ann said it with heavy sigh. Kendall then said, Listen, we need to share stories about Alex to her and divert her mind from continuous reading. We need her to know that we are all here for Alex and what Alex means to us. She should not feel alone and think that this is her problem. 
We all want Alex to get recovered from his state, and she shouldn't take all the pressure by herself. As Kendall was saying this to all the members, in the waiting room, a white BMW entered the entrance of the clinic. The sound of the engine made all people look at the car. From the front driver's seat a tall guy, with designer's clothes exited, the BMW and from next to the driver's seat, a beautiful girl exited the vehicle. Nellie, Kelly, Sophie, Mary Ann, Kendall. All of them were unfamiliar with both these person, who exited the vehicle but they were in surprise, and wondered who these two people were. Oh, it's Debbie's sister, Celeste shouted, as she remembered the wedding from Washington, and Alex told them the story, how someone else was going to marry Debbie, who was known as Leona back then. Yeah, and it is that guy with whom Debbie was about to marry, expressed Celine. It was indeed David and Lindsay, who have heard the news recently, and rushed to Baltimore to see Alex. David was in great debt which could not be fulfilled by anything. And he was always willing to do whatever Alex wanted. Since the day Alex saved David in his father's business, as both of them were entering the premises, David said to Lindsay, I wished I called Alex earlier. I should have visited him earlier. After all he did, I will never be able to repay him. He was the one who was truly there and helped our business. And today because of that, we're on at the top in Washington. It's okay, David, confronted Lindsay. As far as I know, neither Alex nor Debbie will mind it. And I kept in touch with Sis. She mentioned Alex was very busy in some medical examinations and some medicine development. So he was probably busy and didn't have time to visit or meet people during that time. As Lindsay was explaining this to David, another car, probably a cab stopped in front of the clinic's gate. David and Lindsay looked back and saw a man and a girl exit out of the cab. The man was dressed like he was, from a security company and the girl had worn some formal dress. It was probably a college uniform. As both David and Lindsay entered the entrance of the hospital, Mary Ann welcomed them. Welcome, we all are here today for a special purpose, and was discussing about Alex's girlfriend Debbie. As soon as Mary Ann mentioned Debbie, Lindsay exclaimed, What happened to Sis? I've been calling her for a while and she didn't receive my calls, so I somehow got hold of Uncle Rufus's number, and he then informed me about the news of Alex. I came here as soon as possible with David, Lindsay spoke so loudly that some other visitors also looked at her. As this conversation was going on, the man and the girl arrived and asked the group, Hello, I'm Don, a friend of Alex, who used to work together during his time at John Hopkins University. And this is my sister Daisy. We came here as soon as I heard the news. And my sister also wanted to see Alex so we arrived as soon as possible. As he mentioned this David was wondering to himself. Alex even worked as a security guard. Oh, Alex, my respect for you have grown a bit more now. Welcome Don, welcome Daisy. Mary Ann said. Can I see Alex now? I have been so impatient to meet him. Look, I even bought his favorite chocolate, which he said he liked once to me, when my brother was at hospital. Mentioned Daisy to others. Yes, of course you can see him, but he is still unconscious and we don't know when he will wake up. Sophie is looking after him and monitoring his brain activity every two hours and checking the progress. We have even informed some other neurosurgeon who are on the way from Spain and Japan as we speak. Informed Mary on to the group. Oh, I didn't know he was this much sick. Mentioned Daisy. The class six students of our university didn't mention that Alex was in coma. They just said Alex was alive and was in hospital. Added Don, class six in university. Questioned David. Oh, no, you got it all wrong. We have many sections in our university. There are mainly six sections, and each section are of different classes. Section one is class one, section two is class two and therefore section 6 is class 6, informed Don to David. Okay, you got me confused there for a while, said David. All right, thank you everyone for visiting the clinic, who have come to see Alex but, we need you all to understand that, Debbie is in bad health and, her constant will to find a cure for Alex's situation, have made it worse. She hardly eats and have been reading any articles, regarding coma and brain research papers to find a cure. This have made everything worse for her as well as for us, informed Mary on to everyone who are there in the waiting room. We need to make sure that Debbie is not alone here and that we all care about Alex as much as her. Sophie also mentioned that we need to tell stories or any incidents that they trigger any brain part and Alex may wake up since he can hear us involuntarily, mentioned Mary Ann. So we need to tell Debbie these stories and make her believe that we all care. Also, this will help some of us know Debbie better and that will make her feel more comfortable around us. We need to stop her from destroying her own health, Kendall informed. Okay, let's move. I want to see my sis as soon as possible, said Lindsay to Kendall. So, the group of people which included Kelly, Nellie, Rose, Lindsay, David, Dawn and Daisy, along with Celeste, Selen, Kendall and Mary Ann, moved to room one, which was their finest and big room in the clinic. The room was guarded by five security guards, and CCTV with alarm system was already monitored by a security person from the Demon Sect. Five finest people from Demon Sect 
who were highly trained in martial arts, and five other from Joseph's men, who were again expert in various martial arts, were taking shifts by guarding room 1. Sawyer and Lewis visited the clinic, in alternative days to check Alex's progress. As soon as Lindsay entered the room, she was shocked to see both Alex and Debbie. Alex was equipped with so many medical instruments, that made it look like, someone was doing experiments on him. And near him was Debbie, who have now already lost so much weight, that made her unrecognizable. Oh my god, Debbie, exclaimed, Lindsay, what happened to you? As Lindsay was saying this, Debbie finally turned and looked. She was happy to see so many people, and was most happy to see Lindsay. Oh, hi everyone. Hi, Lindsay. How are you? I'm sorry I saw your missed calls, but forgot to call you afterwards. Explained Debbie to her sister Lindsay. What are you talking about? I called you like 10 times, these few days and you didn't reply once. What is wrong with you? Have you seen yourself at the mirror, sis? You're unrecognizable. Why are you pushing yourself to the limit? Look, we are all here for Alex and for you. Even David stopped his business deal today and rushed as soon as he heard about Alex's news. We all are here and you shouldn't push yourself alone and blame yourself. You have done what you could do and now let the experts handle this. As Lindsay was saying this, she pointed to Sophie who was already examining some CT scans of Alex's brain. I already told her that Alex will wake up soon and two of the best neurosurgeons are on their way as we speak, but she is too stubborn to give up, said Sophie as she kept looking on the CT scans of Alex's brain. I know I'm not expert in medical practices, but I can at least try. I want to just help him. He was everything I had when. I had nobody beside me in my college days. He saved me so many times when I was in trouble, yet I can't save him this one time. I can't see him suffer. As Debbie mentioned this her eyes turned red and she was overwhelmed with sadness. She remembered the times, what Alex did to save her, and to what extent he went to save her. Then suddenly she let the tears overflow her eyes and couldn't hold them any longer. And finally tears fell down of her eyes. Lindsay hugged Debbie and all others sat in the luxurious sofa near Alex's bed. Seeing this Kelly and Rose too could not hold their tears. Daisy was still too naive to understand Alex's situation but she also hugged her brother and shed a tear as she looked at Debbie. All of the people there were emotional. Sophie and Kendall who didn't show any emotion at first but couldn't help to rub their eyes. Celeste and Celine said to each other, Master Alex is so lucky to have so many loved ones. Celine said whisperingly to Celeste. Yes indeed, and we are so lucky to be among them, replied Celeste. Look at me Debbie, we all are here now, and we are in this together. Don't let the pressure consume you, we will get this over together, confronted Lindsay as she hugged Debbie. Rose who was hesitant to visit the clinic earlier today, now thought to herself, I'm glad I made this decision to visit Alex. From what I've seen, Debbie is a pure soul and I'm happy for them. I'm no match but at least I can be a good friend of Alex and Debbie. The episode ends with all the people started introducing to each other. All the people here despite rich or poor, despite wearing designer's clothes or normal clothes, nobody questioned anything and nobody held any grudges against each other. This is all because of Alex, who could unite people even from the poorest to the richest.